Okay. Now that the narrator has been turned into a mouse, we're going to find out what happens next. The chapter is called Bruno. I peeped around the leg of the chair and watched the hundreds of witches' feet walking out through the do doors of the ballroom. When they had all gone and the place was absolutely silent, I began to move about cautiously on the floor. Suddenly, I remembered Bruno Jenkins. He must surely be around here somewhere too. Bruno, I called out. Do you remember Bruno Jenkins? A couple chapters ago, he was that greedy little boy who was always eating. The Grand High Witch tricked him into eating chocolate bars the day before. And then when he showed up for six more that she had promised him, the mouse maker had worked and he turned into a mouse and ran off. I wasn't seriously expecting that I would be able to speak at all now that I had become a mouse. So I got the shock of my life when I heard my own voice, my own perfectly normal, rather human, loud voice coming out of my teeny tiny mouse mouth. It was wonderful. I was thrilled. I tried it again. Bruno Jenkins, where are you? I called out. If you can hear me, give me a shout. My voice was exactly the same and just as loud as it had been when I was a boy. Hey there, Bruno Jenkins, where are you? I called, but there was no answer. I pottered between the seat legs, trying to get used to being so close to the ground. I decided I rather liked it. You're probably wondering why I wasn't depressed at all. I find myself thinking, ah, so what's so wonderful about being a human boy anyway? Why is that necessarily any better than being a mouse? I know that mice get hunted and they sometimes get poisoned or caught in traps, but little boys sometimes get hurt too. Little boys have to go to school. Mice don't. Mice don't have to pass exams. Mice don't have to worry about money. Mice, as far as I can see, have only two enemies, humans and cats. My grandmother is a human. Oh, but I know for certain that she will always love me no matter what I look like. And she never, thank goodness, keeps a cat as a pet. When mice grow up, they don't have to go to war. They don't have to fight against other mice. Mice, I felt pretty certain, all like each other. And people don't. Yes, I told myself, I don't think it's about, at all a bad thing to be a mouse. I was wandering around the ballroom floor, thinking about all this, when I spotted another mouse. It was crouching on the floor, holding a piece of bread in his front paws and nibbling away with great gusto. It had to be Bruno. Bruno's always eating. Hello, Bruno, I said. He glanced up at me for about two seconds and then right, went right on guzzling. What have you found? I asked him. He glanced up at me for about two seconds. One of them dropped it, he answered. It's a fish paste sandwich. It's pretty good. He too spoke with a perfectly normal human voice. One would have expected that a mouse, if it was going to speak at all, would do so with the smallest, squeakiest voice you could imagine. It was terrifically funny to hear the voice of a rather loud-mouthed Bruno coming out of that tiny little mouse's throat. Listen, Bruno, I said, now that we're both, both mice, I think we ought to start thinking a little bit about the future. He stopped eating and stared at me with small black eyes. What do you mean we, he said. The fact that you're a mouse has nothing to do with me. But you're a mouse too, Bruno. Don't be a fool, he said. I'm not a mouse. Mm, I'm afraid you are, Bruno. I most certainly am not, he shouted. Why are you insulting me? I haven't been rude to you. Why are you calling me a mouse? Don't you know what happened to you? I asked. What on earth are you talking about? Yelled Bruno. Well, I have to inform you, I said, that not very long ago, the witches turned you into a mouse. Then they did it to me. You're lying, he said. I'm not a mouse. If you hadn't been so busy guzzling down that sandwich, you would have noticed your hairy paws. Take a look at them. Bruno looked down at the paws and jumped. Good grief. I am a mouse. You wait till my father hears about this. You may think it's an improvement, I thought. I don't want to be a mouse, Bruno shouted, jumping up and down. I refuse to be a mouse. I am Bruno Jenkins. There are worse things than being a mouse, I said. You can live in a hole. I don't want to live in a hole, Bruno shouted. And you can creep into the larder at night, and the larder's kind of like a refrigerator. And you can nibble through all the packets of raisins and cornflakes and chocolate biscuits and everything else you can find. You can stay there all night eating yourself silly. That's what mice do. Hmm. Now that's a thought. 
Bruno said, perking up a bit. But how am I going to get the door of the fridge open to get the cold chicken and all the leftovers? That's something I do every evening at home. Well, maybe your rich father will get you a special little mouse fridge all to yourself, I said, one that you can open. You say a witch did this to me? Asked Bruno. Which witch? The one who gave you the chocolate bar in the hotel lobby yesterday. Don't you remember? <gasps> that filthy old cow, he shouted. I'll get her for this. Where is she? Who is she? Oh, forget it, I said. You don't have a hope. Your biggest problem at this moment is your parents. How are they going to take all this news? Will they treat you with sympathy and kindness? Bruno considered for a moment. I think he said that my father will be a little bit put out. And your mother? She's terrified of mice, Bruno said. Then you've got a problem, don't you? Why only me? What about you? Well, my grandmother will understand perfectly. She knows all about witches, I said. Bruno took another bite of his sandwich. What do you suggest, he said. I suggest we both go first of all and consult my grandmother. She'll know exactly what to do. I moved toward the doors, which were standing open. Bruno, still gra grasping part of the sandwich in his front paw, followed after me. When we get out to the corridor, remember the hallway? We're going to run like mad, I said. So stick close to the wall, away from the center, and follow me. Do not talk and do not let anyone see you. Don't forget that just about anyone who catches sight of you is only going to see a mouse and they're going to want to kill you. I snatched the sandwich out of his paw and threw it away. Here it goes, I said. Keep behind me. So here they go, Bruno and the narrator. Going to find the narrator's grandma and hope she has a good plan. All right, tune in next time for the next chapter.